what a mess. And, you know, it's not just a soap opera at the top of the Tory party. Um, they've done huge damage to our economy, huge damage to our reputation as a country. And what we can't have now, because... The public are paying the price for this, mm. mortgages, etc. What we can't have is a revolving door of chaos, um, the next experiment for leader of the Tory party and prime minister. We have an alternative. That's a stable Labour government. And the public are entitled to have a say on this. Mm. Uh, we need a general election. OK, Seki, so you're calling for a general election, uh, but at a moment of acute instability, there has been market instability... Uh, there's a cost of living crisis. The Tories are going to replace the Prime Minister within a week and the general election is going to take weeks and weeks and weeks. Can you see that that... I'm not, I'm not kind of asking you to comment on the principle of it, yeah. of, of legitimacy, no. but can you see that that might not be practical right now? But the risk to the country is carrying on with this utter chaos. Um, so you've got this real choice, utter chaos with the Conservatives or stability under a Labour government. So the risk is not a general election. The risk is carrying on with this utter chaos. They've made huge... They've damaged the economy very badly in the last few weeks. This damage has been done. People watching this programme will be paying more on their mortgages as a result of the experiment that Liz Trust imposed on this country. But we've had 12 years of this. Mm. So uh, I don't accept the argument that the general election is a risk. Mm. Not at all, because uh, an incoming Labour government uh, that can stabilise the economy and has got a plan for growth that is credible and will drive up working um, conditions and standards and deal with the cost of living crisis is what this country needs. Just finally, needs. though, on this and then we'll move on. Might it not be better to have a general election in the spring once we have got through winter, once the economic plan has been laid out? Because a general election and potential complete change of leadership in terms of governing party, it might spook the markets more. And the risk of spooking the markets more is there is a material effect, as you know, on people's food bills, on their yeah. mortgages, on their, th their livelihoods. And it might be more responsible of you to say, I want a general election, but I want to get through this immediate cost of living crisis. Is that not a fair argument? If you look at the last few weeks, the only thing that spooked the markets is that kamikaze mini-budget. That's what spooked but the markets. But now they're fixing it because but, they're well, going to get rid of the person... I think many people perpetrator. listening to say, you are saying, really, you've burnt through three prime ministers and you want another go. You've burnt through four chancellors and you want another go. You've had 12 years of failure. You've inflicted economic damage. And around the world, our reputation has been affected. And you want to just carry on. You want to pretend that that's the route to stability. Mm. It isn't. And I've had people coming up to me, you've probably had it, saying, what is going on? This is a mess. I'm embarrassed. We need change. Are you angry? I'm not angry on my part. I'm really angry for people who'll be watching this, who are going to be paying more. If you're paying as a result of what this government has done to our economy, three, four, five hundred pounds more on your mortgage because it's not mm. on a fixed uh, mortgage, that is every month you are paying. You're not getting anything more. You're not getting a better house. Mm. You're not getting some luxury holiday. You're getting the same thing. You're paying more because this government carried out an experiment on the country. And I think it's time to say enough is enough. We need to move on from this. We don't have to do it this way. There is an alternative, a stable Labour government uh, with real leadership, with a real plan for an economy that works for working people. I think it's time to put that choice to the country. Do you want to carry on with this utter chaos or do you want stability under a Labour government? Sakir, so, you went up against Liz Truss. You've only had to do it three times. Yeah. Um, next week will be her fourth and final Prime Minister's questions. It's barely believable even saying that such short a tenure. Do you feel sorry for her? Well, look, I can see that there's um, pressure and intense pressure on her and um, I think we can all see that that takes its toll. And I don't, as Could a human you being, you know, want to see that in anyone. Mm. But I think it is important for me to say that for millions of people who are really struggling to pay their bills, to make ends meet, to meet their mortgage payments, going to mm. food banks, they're under a huge strain mm. as well. And we need to take that into account and we need to allow them to say, do you want to carry on with this or do you want to change? You want a general election. You accept, though, you're not going to get one. 
Well, you're not getting one. You if can we say as much as you want, well, you're not getting one. If we don't get one, it'll be for one reason and one reason only, and that is that Conservative MPs, who know very well that this is unsustainable, will put their party first and not the country first. And I believe all politicians should put the country first. It was my main message to my party at our conference in September. So I say to those Tory MPs, put your country first, not your party first. But you do accept that you're asking for something you won't get. You, you, you would acknowledge that, yeah? Well, let's see where we get to. This is unprecedented. We've not burnt through prime ministers and chancellors and home secretaries like this ever in our history. So I think it is time to say we are in an unprecedented world here. We can't carry on like this. This is real damage being done to our economy, to our reputation. We need to stop this chaos and move on. You want to stop the chaos, but the chances of an election, I think, are quite bluntly... That'll be up to Tory MPs. Well, and, it's um, like Turkey's voting for Christmas. They well, don't. It, it, if they decide that their party comes first and their country comes second, uh, then that's a matter for them. But I have to but say, might, I think that's the wrong way I, 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 you know, I'm just saying to you, they might think that they have a new, more effective leader and that does put the country first at this moment in time. You, you get that. Well, you might they, not agree, but you understand that argument. They spent the summer tearing each other apart. There are vicious arguments going on mm. inside the Conservative Party. It's two parties under one roof. There was a bloodletting over the summer. We've now had um, a few weeks of this experiment with Liz Truss, which has cost people hugely in terms of their finances. Mm. Um, and I think that, you know... The idea that they can suddenly come together in happy harmony and provide stability is simply not realistic. There are reports um, that Boris Johnson is considering another run at office. Uh, it is going to be put to party members in some form. What do you think of that, the return of Boris Johnson? I remind myself that I think it was just about three months ago, his own party said that he was unfit for office. That's why he resigned. His own front bench were resigning en masse, not because they disagreed with him on some policy issue, but because they had concluded that he was unfit for office. Mm. So if the argument or the proposition from the Conservative Party is, OK, we may have had you know, a few weeks of economic chaos, done huge damage to the economy, so what we now want to do is, can we go back to a man that only three months ago we all said was unfit for public office. Mm. I think most people would say, I'd probably say, knocking on the door, look, before you start down this road, uh, I think I should have a say and I think we should have the choice between that option or a Labour government under Keir Starmer to provide the stability that this country needs. You think the idea of Boris Johnson's return is like a bad joke? Well, going back to a man that I thought he was unfit for office, but his own party, his own MPs, remember they were resigning en masse because they decided he was unfit for office. So to go from this kamikaze experiment that has cost the public dearly under Liz Truss back to a man who his own party thinks is unfit for office is, is the most powerful case for a general election you could ever have. And just finally, there are a number of other potential runners and riders. There's Rishi Sunak, there's Penny Morden, there's Ben Wallace. When, when you look at um, the would-be next Prime Minister, because it's not going to be you, um, is there anyone that you think, I could do business with that person or that's a reasonable choice? Well, I don't fixate on the individual because, in the end, it's a battle of ideas. We have our clear plan uh, for the economy, have got a clear plan about how we... Uh, put in place a sustainable programme for improving living standards, dealing with the cost of living, uh, the next generation of jobs. I'm confident in Labour's plans. I'm confident what the Labour Party has to offer. I'm confident the Labour Party has the answers to the challenges facing the country. So in terms of who is next up as the next experiment for the Tory party, um, that doesn't matter much to me because in the end it's a battle of ideas and we have the ideas. Finally, in terms of what's happened this week, we've seen a, a governing party imploding. Um, you clearly don't take pleasure in that, but politically this is to your advantage. They've been imploding, I think, for years. But it's good for you, isn't it? Well, it's not good for the country, because this implosion, this fighting, this division, this chaos, is costing people in their pockets. And working people are going out working really hard, 
paying mm -hmm. now higher prices, paying higher mortgages, they're paying the price for this. So it doesn't give me any pleasure to see them implode like this. It does make me um, absolutely convinced that we need to say enough of this. We've had 12 years of this. We've got absolutely nothing to show for it. Uh, let's have the fresh start that Britain needs. And Sir Keir, just one more thing. When we spoke at Labour conference, you said to me you always believed you could win in one term and that you would eventually become Prime Minister. After the events of the past 48 hours, are you now more confident of that statement? I was always confident that we could change the Labour Party, um, expose the government as not fit to govern, mm. um, and then go forward into government. I do think and believe that we can win that general election. That's why I put my whole team on a general it more election now after this? footing. Yes, um, I think that a hope in a Labour victory has turned very much into a belief in a Labour government.